Welcome to this episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox, and I'm delighted to welcome our guests for the second time, where we're looking at their take on the game and leadership aspect of the podcast. Who knows what we might find out because we all look at this differently and it's always so interesting to see what the guests have in store for me when I turn up because we never plan this in advance. So I hope you're as excited as me. Let's get into it and I'll see you on the other side. Hi everyone, I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox and I'm delighted to be here for episode two of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Um, yes, excitement is still bubbling over from episode one and um, I know it will bubble over into episode three as well, <laughs> as these are my three episodes to tell you all about my story before we start to um, have some guests on where I'm asking them about their stories. So to, in episode one, you heard all about my leadership story and all some of the things, some of the inspirations, some of the journey that I've been through, the jobs and the experiences that have made me who I am today. And um, I guess part of that as well that I probably missed out in episode one. So here's a little bonus for you is um, I forgot to talk about my beautiful family that I have now. And that doesn't mean they're not uppermost in my mind. But um, I married my husband, Stuart, in um, 20, not, not 20, 1999. That's how long ago it was. Um, so we've been married for a very, very long time. And in 2006, we had our one and only daughter, Kaylee, um, who's an absolute inspiration, um, super creative, super fabulous. And I know I'm biased, but uh, I do have some external validation of that as well. Not that we're all looking for validation, but it's nice to know that others think that your children are fantastic too. Um, because that helps show that um, I'm trying to do my best, as is Stuart, to bring Kaylee up to be a, a fun, kind and loving daughter um, and friend to those that are around her. She's already got a great work ethic, um, so uh, it's inspiring to see what she's uh, starting in terms of her leadership story already. So who knows, in a few years time, she might be a guest on Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Um, so what am I gonna talk about today? Um, Game of Leadership, we are thinking about what game in leadership means to me. Now, when I thought about the, the title of the podcast, I guess I had all sorts of things going around in my head. And, um, you know, the first thing that kind of popped up was that sort of cynical view, if you like, the politics that people play when they're trying to get ahead. And um, I guess for me, that always has a bit of a negative connotation because it's almost that I don't care who I step on to get ahead as long as I'm ahead and I'm the one that's seen as doing great or delivering this piece of work or whatever else, you know, that that really uh, cheesy saying, there's no I in team. Well, those sorts of people, it's all about them and um, not the team itself. So, you know, for me, um, I'm not so keen on office politics. Um, I actively choose to stay out of it, um, have done over the years. Um, and, you know, I'm interested in the collective um, development and advancement of me and my team and those that I work with around me um, to, you know, to put that positive slant on the office politics, if you like. And um, when I say office politics, I do mean the games that people play, mind games, um, you know, in terms of trying to get themselves ahead or whatever 
connotation that makes for you. So that's kind of the first thing that came into my mind. But uh, hopefully you got from episode one, I'm, I'm quite the sunny side up. I do like to look at the positive side of things. And um, really the game of leadership um, sort of overriding theme for me is more along the side of um, the games that we can play together to develop ourselves as leaders. So here I'm thinking of the icebreakers, the team builds, the things that we've all done that help develop our teams, develop our ideas, help us collaborate better. All of those fantastic things that can lead to higher performing teams. And then I was thinking, OK, so what are some of the great things that I've been part of? And, um, you know, so whether that's something that I've done in the workshops that I run as a coach um, or whether that's things that I've been part of back in my kind of corporate days, if you like. So I guess the first one um, that springs to mind might be um, the a little exercise we did years ago in a in a leadership team um, sort of three day meeting I think it was with a with the team build element pulled into it and um, yeah not an icebreaker but like a I suppose it's a game, um, but it was uh, creating a, a bag, so like a shopping bag that represented my own brand. And it, it was such an interesting exercise and I'm trying to remember all the things that I put on mine. And in fact, I've got that wrong. It was to create our brand as a team. So um, that was the brief, our brand as a team, that's right. So it was all the things that we could find from colours, magazines, you know, coloured paper, magazines, cutting out words, whatever it was, um, bits of glitter, you know, proper craft box and, and messy exercise, which was really great fun and something that I hadn't done for a very, very long time because uh, once we leave um, junior school, you probably don't get to do that very much. And so it was good fun. Oh, I used to do it a bit with my daughter as well um, as she was when she was little. So um, anyway, what was interesting to me was that all of us, apart from one, created what I would say is really inspirational bags, um, shopping bag that represented our team and what we wanted it to be. And, you know, some of the themes that came out were kindness, collaboration. Um, I don't know if these were the right words, but things like rising up together, driving forwards, purpose, values, same goals, etc. All of those great things kind of came out. Um, and um, some people like put a luxury car on like a cutout of a Aston Martin, for example, to, to show that we wanted to be delivering quality, for example. So we're all sorts of wonderful ways that we represented what we wanted to be as a team. But out of all of that, there was one person in the team that did a bag about themselves. And it was really interesting to, to me at that time. Now, this is a couple of years before I came, became a full time coach, so probably wasn't quite so into my reflective practice um, as I certainly am now. But um, it, it was really it really touched a nerve I suppose is the right thing to say that the brief had been tell us how you want to be with the team what you want that to look like how the team works together as this brand on this bag on this shopping bag and yet they'd gone for this it's all about me approach 
Now, I'm not going to say who it is, doesn't matter, but it was, um, it was very telling and actually affirming of the thoughts that I'd had about them prior to that exercise. So I'm telling you all about that because a simple game to make a brand can really tell a lot about a person <laughs> and where their values lie and where their priorities lie. So clearly we had one person in the team that prioritised themselves versus the other 10 of us, because there were 11 in the team, that prioritised the team in terms of the exercise and the brief that we were given. So um, that was very interesting to me. and. Um, you know, we debriefed on it afterwards. I don't know that we ever got to the why of, um, you know, it's quite a few years ago now, but uh, that's one that stood out for me. But actually, it's a really great exercise if you want to see what kind of values, what things people hold as important to themselves in terms of being a team player. That worked really, really well. One of the other things that uh, we did as a team, and this is a bit cliche, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway, because it just was so eye opening in terms of helping us understand each other in this team. And um, what we did was a team build of going to a venue and cooking a three course meal together. Now this was over in um, in Poland um, and they actually brought in an English speaking chef, but somebody that specialized in Polish food. It was the most fun evening I've had in a work aspect, I think. Um, but it was so interesting how the team kind of slotted into these different um, different roles in the kitchen. Obviously, you had the head chef um, who was saying, right, and next you're going to be doing this, blah, blah, blah. So there were those that were like, yeah, I'm in, I'm all in. I'm, I'm putting the apron on. I've got the knife in my hand and the chopping board and I'm getting going with cutting up veggies or meat or prepping other food, whatever it might be. And then you had the handful I think it was about five because there was a lot of us in the team that went that night I think near on 20 but about five of them that were like I'm getting the glass of wine and I'm going to be over here having a chat and I'm going to let them do all the work <laughs> and you know what that was absolutely fine because if we'd all been in there trying to trying to do the stuff for the kitchen, it, it would have been you know quite chaotic. Um, the the chef that ran it had a great handle on keeping us in check, um, keeping us up to speed, timing what we were cooking, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I have to say, what we made was amazing. And I can't remember all the different things we made. I do remember chopping a lot of veg. Um, but it was a brilliant, brilliant, fun evening. And out of that, it really helped us see different qualities in each other. Um, you know, different, yeah, different leadership qualities, different strengths. As I say, those that knew that, that sort of cooking wasn't their strength went and, you know, chatted over there those that really wanted to learn or really felt that cooking was a strength came and joined in with the cooking and it, it all worked really well and then we all sat down and enjoyed it together afterwards um you know there was no thoughts of oh they didn't pull their weight so they're not getting any food there was none of that it was a really really lovely fun game to do together so i guess they're two of the kind of big um games that stick out for me in the leadership moments that i've had over the years but when i'm designing workshops 
Um, I do a lot of workshops, done a lot on resilience, tenacity, um, purpose. I've got my purpose program, um, the accelerated purpose experience if you're teams, or I've got the um, connecting with your purpose if you're individuals. Um, and, you know, I try to bring in the fun aspect to that as well because there's nothing worse than coming to um to a workshop or a, my group program realization to results as well as all sorts that i've got that i offer um so if you're interested have a look at my website www.onpointlead.com um where it lays out everything for you nice and easy to follow it's just been redone early this year so um hopefully that will be um, easy for you to follow and look up what you're interested in. Um, but I always try and bring in an element of fun, you know, even to the point of, yes, I've got to teach um, some, some serious stuff in there, but I'll always try and do an icebreaker, um, you know, a simple check-in. The simplest of check-ins is, um, you know, going around the virtual room on the gallery, if you're on Zoom, whatever it might be, or, you know, this works equally well face-to-face, -face, of course. Um, and, you know, tell me one thing that's gone really well this week. And you know what? We get some fantastic, um, fantastic uh, answers on that one, you know, from, oh, I've been trying to do this this uh, piece of work over and over and I've messed it up each time I finally nailed it this week you know and the people they just light up you see that energy shift um, in their faces and their their body language you know the shoulders drop as they relax the you know the big smile ear, ear to ear and they sort of lean into the camera because they're excited you know it, it actually worked this week and I managed to do it um, to, to, you know, others that are equally fantastic, but perhaps a little bit more serious where they've said, you know, I've been trying to, to, um, secure some care for somebody that I love. Um, and it's been a real nightmare to get it. And this week it pulled off and I'm delighted because that means that, uh, they've got the support they need moving forwards. So, you know, people share all sorts of different things. And if you create that safe space that um, that people can feel that they're safe to share, be honest, um, then, you know, you're on to a winner. And I would say that's the key part to to creating an environment for you, for you, for you one to one with somebody, for you with your team creating that safe space for them to feel that they can relax and take part honestly and authentically in that kind of game aspect of things. So as I say, in terms of that icebreaker, sharing that one thing that's gone well, if you're in a, an environment that doesn't feel safe, and I'm talking about psychological safety here, um, you know, where you create that space where the team trusts that they can share things and there won't be any negative consequences as a result. Um, even if they're sharing something that's failed and that they need to revamp and try again, they're still safe to do so. So uh, yes, I won't go too much into psychological safety, but I can recommend a great book, The Fearless Organization by Amy Edmondson. Um, she's a, one of the professors I had the pleasure of working with at, um, when I was doing the Harvard program that I've talked about before in episode one. Um, so yeah, amazing lady, fantastic in the flesh, fantastic listening to her lectures. Um, yeah, great woman, very knowledgeable on it and done a lot of research. So recommend reading that if you haven't. Anyway, if they feel they're psychologically safe, they will jump into these sorts of games, feet first, go all in and show up as their true, natural, authentic selves. And that's really important in terms of creating that environment 
um, to try out these different games and um, get rid of that negative connotation around game and office politics. You know, start creating that positive environment for your team. I think that really is what Game of Leadership um, is all about for me, um, creating that positive environment, welcoming in those different views, yeah, welcoming in those differences. How could I forget to talk about this? Welcoming in the differences, being inclusive in your leadership. Um, you know, no matter what level people are at, what um, stage of their career they're at, you know, whether they've, you know, not achieved something, it's gone wrong, it didn't achieve the results you hoped for, you know, help them have that growth mindset you adopt that growth mindset that allows you to analyze what happened, take the learnings and try again in a different way. Again, that's all part of creating that psychologically safe environment um, and trying out those different games in a safe way where people want to take part and they, they really, really enjoy that. And that will help you stand out um, as an inclusive leader um you know and being the leader that people want to follow people want to work with people want to do things for because you naturally create that environment for them so i hope that's been interesting i hope it's uh, helped you um take away some hints and tips there of um what might be interesting for you to um take into your own leadership behaviors and um you know kind of the way that you lead your team with that i will see you next week for episode three um where i will be sharing those pivotal moments um in my leadership story so thank you so much for listening to game of leadership the podcast for curious leaders and i'll speak to you next week bye Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Why don't you now take a moment to reflect on what you've heard and see what resonates for you. You never know, there may be some golden nuggets in there that really make sense to you and you'd like to apply in your leadership. Who knows what's possible? We all bring that different uniqueness to the way that we lead ourselves in all walks of our lives. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox and I really look forward to seeing you next time on Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Bye for now.